Michigan by the Bottle. I'm Shannon Casey. And I'm Courtney Casey. And we are down in the Pioneer Wine Trail today. Yep. And virtually. Virtually, yes. And uh, I think that the Pioneer Wine Trail is, it's for people around our area in Metro Detroit, it's the closest wine trail to visit. You could t easily do a day trip there. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people in our area don't know about the Pioneer Wine Trail. So yeah. if you haven't been there, uh, it's in the Jackson Ann Arbor area. And Flying Otter is the wine we're featuring today from Pioneer, and they're in Adrian. Mm. So, um, a quick story about the winery. Um, Flying Otter is, you just look so excited when I start my tasting room <laughs> winery stories. People want to know. Um, right. So the, the way this came about, because it's kind of an unusual name, um, the family's last name that owns it, their last name is Otter, and it's Swedish for Otter. And then Bob, the patriarch, um, is fascinated with uh, aviation. And so that is how it came to be, Flying Otter. And that's why they have a Flying Otter on their label. So they do. Yes, they do. And actually, um, we just launched a new series called Grape Glossary, where we're talking to the winemakers about different grapes that people might not be familiar mm -hmm. with. And our latest one is about the grape that we're featuring today, which is Marquette. And um, Bob Utter actually gave us a whole rundown about Marquette, so you can read a lot of that on our website under the Grape Glossary, yep. if you're so inclined. But it's actually a University of Minnesota um, cold hardy hybrid. And they describe it as a cousin of Frontenac and grandson of Pinot Noir. Wow. Yeah. Some good lineage. Yes. All right. So this is definitely, you know, after the polar vortex, we need, we need to, some of these cold hardy hybrids are going to be earning their keep because, you know. Yeah. And they, uh, they focus on a lot of hybrids at, mm -hmm. at Flying Out, and it's typically they do. what they grow. Yeah. And they also have a lovely pavilion there where they have live music every week and it overlooks their vineyard and they just finished expanding it. So there's a little tidbit for you. If you're looking for an excuse for why you should go visit Flying Hatter, there you go. There you go. There you go. So what are you getting on the nose? So on the nose, I get a, a chalkiness mm -hmm. um, and I get a combination of red and black fruits. So I get some like leather, almost a little funk, and then like a lot of fruit. Yeah. There's just a lot of different aromas going on there. Yeah, it's it's very intense. Um, the aromatics kind of jump out at you, mm -hmm. slap you around a little bit. But, it's but like I jammy. get It is, and I get, you know, some black cherry, I get some, some raspberry, maybe some cocoa. Mm -hmm. It definitely gets some like leatheriness. Definitely too. some leather. Raw meat. Yeah, yeah. Like almost like a pepperoni. Yeah, mm -hmm. but raw. -er. Rawr, rawr. Oh, rawr. <laughs> so done dry. Mm -hmm. um, done in a dry style. It's got that savory meatiness to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's like meat with a fruit sauce on it. You know how like you have a piece of steak and it, it has is. like some kind yeah. of reduction on yeah. it. That's kind of how I feel about this one. Yeah, it, it, and you know a little spicy, so you get a little, little yeah, peppercorn. Like a little spiciness, like pepperoni spices almost. Like one could say pepperoni spices. Pepperoni spices. They planted their first Marquette in, in 2007, just for a little tidbit of trivia. Um, and right now they're just doing a straight varietal with it, but as they um, expand their production on it, they're planning to try and use it as a blending grape. And, yeah. Um, they have a lot of interesting hybrids over there um, at Flying Under. I know yeah. they have Petite Pearl, um, La Crescent, all kinds of different stuff. So. Adam Hilton in this podcast is for you. <laughs> I think we shouted out to Adam Hilton in last time we did a podcast on a hybrid. So <laughs> our friend Adam is a big hybrid fan. so um, Can't get enough. So I'm sure he'll be like the first one to watch this podcast about Marquette. Right. <laughs> um, no, it, it, you know, it, it, makes a, it makes a nice, you know, everyday mm -hmm. red drinking wine. I mean, you, you could easily pair this with food. Um, you know, it's a little bolder, so you could it, it hold up to grilled meats and things like that. Plus yeah. It's, it's got a lot of that to it. It's, you know, it's, it's, we're coming up on July 4th and barbecue time. Yeah. And if you feel like a dry red, but you want it to have some, you know, a lot of fruitiness to it, some meatiness to it, and like you said, hold up against meat, I think yeah. this would be pretty good. Very approachable. Um, yeah. You know, even, even one of those reds that you could drink outside on a nice hot summer day, because again, it's not a lot of tannin structure. It's it's not. Um, it's not it's, gonna like suck the the liquid out of your yeah. mouth and make you feel like you're chewing a cotton ball. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. The, the t very I would say low tannins. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, and again, that makes for a very easy drinking everyday red. For sure. And I think that's for exactly sure. what they were going for. Yeah. So. What do they say? They say dark cherry, berry, and spice aromas and flavor. So we're right there with them. I didn't have to read that before. So. 
cheater. But, but you know, with with in all honesty, with the polar vortex, a lot of people are reporting a lot of damage, and so we're probably going to be seeing, um, you know, quite a bit of. Will be interesting. Interesting to see how the hybrids hold up through all mm -hmm. this. Um, because they're meant to be cold hardy, a lot of these that people are planning. So, um, you know, maybe people will get more adventurous and be trying some more of these hybrids after what happened this sure. year. Sure. But, but, and I think, you know, hybrids get a, a, a rough a rough time or a bad name sometimes, but you've got to, you've got to realize, at least in my mind, hy a lot of the hybrid grapes, they're not meant to be super serious, long-term aging wines. A lot of them are just meant to be fun, whimsical, everyday drinking wines, and mm -hmm. I think this does it. Like a nice red table wine, yeah. having it with a casual dinner, that sort of thing. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. Um, so there's good flavor on this, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and again, I think a lot of people who don't like red wines because of the the massive tannins this would be very approachable for them and in our tasting room i do find when i talk to people that the, the number one reason why someone comes in and they say they don't like reds they're not a red wine drinker it's usually when we start dissecting it down to like well what don't you like about reds it's usually the tannins mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the taste it's the fact that they don't like the drying effect in their mouth yep. that the tannins give you and so some of these bolder reds you know people who have have been drinking California Cabernet Sauvignon forever. You know right. they're used to tannins and, and kind of boldness. Right. But the people who have you know started out drinking whites when they try to segue to red, sometimes it takes a little while because you got to get used to that tannin. And you know. Not everybody wants to be punched in the face with tannin. No. I so. love it. But, <laughs> but check out uh, Marquette next time you're at Flying Otter. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, make sure you check out Flying Otter. And the new, new really expanded pavilion. And the new pavilion. Yes. And keep checking out MichiganByTheBottle.com where we're supporting the state with every sip.